back with part two uh, on the Saruba needle feed machine and if you haven't seen part one I'll put a uh, link up in here leading you to the previous video where I go through putting the unpacking the machine and putting it uh, putting the machine head into the table and giving it a test run so I'd like to go through some of the differences between a fully automatic machine like this and a manual machine so it's capable of fully automatic back tacking and we'll have a close look at that and the automatic foot lifting, press foot lifting and automatic underbed thread trimmer which trims both the needle and the bobbin thread. Just a recording in the conservatory here at the moment so <laughs> yesterday we had rain, today we've got a little bit of wind and Molly, Molly's turned up, Molly would like to say hello. She's been in the shower, she's got this weird habit of uh, drinking, she'll only drink when the shower is on and she gets in and just sticks her head in far enough to get a, a drink of water and she gets a little bit uh, wet on the old noggin so she ends up with this spiky sort of hairdo so she is often quite soggy. One feature of a, an industrial automatic machine is that when you back pedal on the treadle here so push on the back of it it will do it there's a couple of things that can happen one is that the presser foot will lift so I'm just pushing back on the back of the treadle there and that lifts the press foot and then you can put your position your fabric. Uh, I think I'd better get rid of the cat. Hmm. Come on Molly. And then also you know we're, once we've started a seam and you're finishing your seam if you heel back just halfway you get foot lift and if I release again and then halfway again foot lift and if I heel right back fully, it will do the ending back stitch and automatic trimming. Now with a manual machine, you don't have that option of the automatic foot lifting here. You, there's two ways you can do it. The normal uh, way is that you would use the knee lever here, which manually lifts the presser foot. So you just have your knee up against that and you move your knee to the right and it puts the foot there and there's also a, a lever on the back of the machine that manually lifts the presser foot as well and latches the press foot in the up position also that's not used so much in the industrial side of things so that's the foot lifting function and also with a uh, automatic machine you get needle positioning feature which means that the needle is either always down when you take your foot off the treadle or it's always up so let's have a quick look at that so if we start a seam here and you'll notice every time I stop the needle is positioned in the down position there no matter what now that's quite different to a manual machine where it will just stop where it stops. It doesn't uh, position automatically. What you can do is you can set the um, needle position, up and down needle position here. So if I toggle that to needle down, uh, sorry, needle up, you'll see now that it will stop always in the up position. Now generally needle down is the preferred position because when you're coming up to a corner the needle's already in the right place for you to turn the fabric and carry on. Just like that. So that's automatic needle positioning. Uh, a lot of domestic machines have that feature. So with the presser foot there are several modes, lifting modes. So 
This is in the mode where when you stop sewing, the press foot uh, remains down and when you back heel partially it lifts like I showed you before and a full and a full um, back heel does the back stitch and lifts the foot. You can switch uh, the mode, so I'll choose the first mode there and in that mode the press foot remains up after the end of the seam like that switch modes again so this is the second type where every time you stop the foot lifts automatically I'm not healing back there and then heal back and then the last mode is the same as the previous one except when you end the seam the foot remains up I'm not healing back I don't have my feet on the treadle there at all so that's the different modes of the press foot lifter I'll just set that back to normal there now the automatic back stitching so we've got A, B, C and D and they've all got threes here in them and that's referring to the automatic back tacker so that means it'll do three stitches forward and three back so that's A and B and then when you put your foot down you it'll continue on its seam until you uh, heel back and then it will do three stitches back and three stitches forward automatically and you can toggle those up and down to increase or decrease the amount of stitches you want in the back tacking feature so if I put that up to say five on all of those so it'll automatically do five stitches forward five back and then I can go finish the seam heel back and that so that's five stitches if I change it back to three it does three if we have a close look there you'll see that's the five stitch back tack and that's the three stitch back tack there the start and the finish there so that's the automatic back tack with a manual machine without the back stitch function so what you would normally do is when you're starting a seam is you would manually um, back tack by using the reversing lever manually there let's say that I'm starting a seam here now you would normally um, head down the seam and then hold the reverse back a few stitches and then let go that's a manual back tack and then at the end of the seam you would do the same thing like that and then you would um, you know position your machine by hand bring your take up lever up to the top there and you know remove the work from the machine there like that so it's quite convenient to have the back stitching done for you pretty handy uh, you, you can get this that sort of feature on a domestic machine as well and some domestic machines also have this next feature uh, you may have noticed the automatic thread trimmer so you don't have to trim the thread at all pretty handy so if I turn the automatic thread trimmer off it's just a toggle on the front panel so just uh, press there to turn the thread trimmer off and I'll heel back and you'll notice that no trimming so that is a uh, how a normal manual type machine would work with no underbed trimming I'll toggle the underbed trimmer back on just like 
like that. I won't go into all of the features of the control panel. Uh, th there's quite a bit that it can do. You can program it to do um, the likes of a rounded pocket and you can program it to do a certain amount of stitches down one side, a certain amount along the bottom and a certain amount up the top. And there's two different styles. You can obviously, you know, change all the, the back tacking lengths. Uh, you can, oh, you can switch off the back tacker here. Yeah, so you can switch back tacking right off there. Just toggle those, nice and easy. Um, needle positioning up and down. There's a program button here that'll be for programming your different, um, you know, lights of doing around pockets and things like that. So that's relating to this button down the bottom here. You can manually uh, toggle between needle up and down, just a one shot type. The This will be a ramp up speed, so that'll be an acceleration curve that you can adjust. And um, various uh, other buttons for functions and whatnot that I won't go into today. We've got, as I showed before, that's the reversing lever there. And that's your stitch length adjuster here. And on the front here we've got the tension, that's your main tension dial. And up here we've got the pre-tensioner, so that determines the length of the tail after the thread has been trimmed, the tail of the top thread after the trimmer is actuated. We've got a presser foot uh, pressure here, so you just release the lock nut and screw that up or down depending how much foot pressure you want. In part one you would have seen me using this little reversing lever. So that's just a, um, a, a all or nothing reversing switch. One thing with this uh, reversing lever here is that you can uh, it's it's not an all or nothing you can go part way so if you're coming up to a corner and you need to be very accurate to uh, coming up to a line say well you can shorten the stitch length just temporarily by just pressing this down until you uh, find that the needle goes exactly where you want it to go so that's where the reversing levers are quite handy I'm not sure I uh, fully explained the bobbin winding system. So the way the uh, this actually this whole system works with the bobbin winder is while you are using the machine, obviously uh, thread from the bobbin down here is being used, and when that runs out, you've got a brand new uh, fully wound bobbin ready to go. You just uh, remove the bobbin there. I'll tip the machine back so you can get a better view, and you would remove the bobbin. You can do this when the machine's down, when the head's down in position you can actually reach under and do what I'm doing here without tipping the machine head back. But you can, so you've got an empty bobbin, let's say that's empty, you've used all the thread on there, you uh, would, let's just pull the thread off there just to simulate this, so you're out of bobbin thread there you get your newly wound bobbin that you've just taken off your bobbin winder and you install the bobbin into the bobbin case just by inserting the bobbin there and pulling the thread in so the thread goes in the little groove there and then under the spring like that just like that there and then it's ready to install again like that, the head back down there and then you're ready to go again with the new bobbin. But what you can do, uh, so because you've got an empty bobbin here, the best thing to do uh, before you start sewing or while you're sewing is to get another bobbin winding so that you've got another one ready to put into the machine when the one that's in there runs out. And when the bobbin's full, this will just automatically switch off. Like that. And so we've got a bobbin all ready for next time the one that we're using runs out. Okay, let's just have a quick look at the manual here. So this is the instruction book. Uh, the general safety instructions are always a bit of a laugh, I find. <laughs> 
consider working area environment do not expose power to rain I like that keep children away do not let visitors touch the tool or extension code I think that's supposed to be cord dress pop properly <laughs> do not abuse the cord really covering their butts here with all these warnings okay the here's the designation of the model number here so the one I've got is the DL 7200 uh, H for medium to heavyweight materials number four 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 code of hook so number one high speed hook so there's different uh, types of hook two capacity large hook um, so that's a big bobbin type machine it holds a lot more thread oil free hook special hook vertical type so that's a, um, a hook rather than uh, where the bobbin goes in this orientation the bobbin drops in uh, from the top a vertical hook and then 16 these two numbers here were 16 so 6 and 7 1 and 6 6 is 7 number 1 Saruba advanced model with key type operation box and number 7 was uh, number 6 function code was 6 this one so automatic thread trimmer rapidly back stitch uh, no thread wiper. A thread wiper is where the after the machine is trimmed a little wiper comes across and pulls the top thread out frees it from under the foot. Automatic press foot lifting and electronic gripper. So that's the specs of the machine and we've got all the different operations here start uh, back tacking and end tacking options there, pattern selection, here's the pocket stitching I was talking about or rectangular stitching so you can program so you're programming your start and your start back stitch there forward and back as A and B uh, or you can do double back tack at the start A, B, A, B again and then you have your end tacking which is C, D or C, D and C, D for a double double tack uh, free stitching, stitching number setting E. So you know you could program uh, the amount of stitches that you go down, and or you just hold your foot down, and when it reaches the number of stitches that's programmed into E here, it will stop. Or rectangular, so you've got E, F, G, and H programmable in the system. Again, a V type stitching for pockets, and U type stitching here. One shot automatic stitching. I'm not quite sure. I'd have to have a wee play with that. Automatic thread trim, needle up and down stitching sequence. Yeah, bits and pieces in there I haven't really played with. But yeah, the manual's not too bad. It's pretty good. Shows you how to do the bobbin. Threading. That's the manual. I won't go too far into that. So that wraps up this uh, two-part series on the Saruba DL7200. I hope you found that interesting. I do all sorts of videos on industrial and uh, domestic sewing machines uh, and related items, overlockers, etc. or surges. Uh, so yeah, stick around for more videos. Uh, subscribe so that you get notified of when I release new videos. And I thank you very much for watching.